All right. Hello, everybody. We are live. I am Melissa Chelikel. I'm here for another awesome webinar, Webinar Wednesday here with Culture Works. I am not going to be running the webinar today, but my colleague uh, Liz Wilkes is on the line and she's going to be um, taking us through today on working home with kids, working from home with kids. Um, so what I want to do is just quickly run through a few housekeeping items with you all if you're new to our webinar series. What we would like for you to do is stay muted, turn your videos off. That can be distracting during the webinar series. So we just wanna have our speakers on video for the day. Liz, I will unmute you in just a second as well. Um, but all of you should be on mute and videos off. We will also have a Q&A at the end here. So our session will probably run until about 1230. It's optional to stay for the Q&A portion at the end and a recording will be available for you to share with your team um, by tomorrow, if not later today. So that's my housekeeping items for you all. As far as Culture Works, if this uh, webinar was shared with you and you're not familiar with our company, we are based out of Carlsbad, California, here in Southern California, and we do a lot of HR and talent assessments, integrative HR support, culture ops, management coaching, learning and development, um, and just all kinds of fractional HR type services for you. Our uh, theme lately has been that we keep you together when social distancing keeps you apart. So we're offering culture connectivity for your purpose, people, and processes. So today, Liz is going to be walking us through work from home communication tips between your kids, your spouse, whoever you might live with, scheduling your day around your home life, setting expectations and boundaries, some educational resources and activity ideas to kind of get creative with your kids during this time, and then a little bit on asking for support, and then we'll dive into that Q&A. So without further ado, let me unmute Liz and she will walk us through our first slide. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate it. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. I think it, you know, when we sat down on the drawing board and we started coming up with topics for a webinar series, this was one that we definitely thought would be extremely valuable. Um, times have drastically changed as we all know. So we are trying to manage working from home, being the parent, the chef, the teacher, and everything else in between. So we really hope that these um, are going to provide you some amazing resources and help you to remain productive. So first one is communication. We've heard it before, communication is key. Uh, whether you're working from home or you're in the office, it is essential that you communicate with the people on your team. Let your supervisor know, you know, what you may need additional support on. Maybe if you need additional equipment um, for your home office so that you can continue to remain productive. It's, it's just about keeping that open dialogue with your supervisor and explaining what you need and what they can expect from you. Just clearly setting those expectations. The same thing is going to go with your clients or your customers. Um, I know personally, I've unfortunately had to say, hey, my youngest just woke up a little bit early from her nap. I'm pretty sure I've got her completely preoccupied, but I did just wanna let you know just in case. I think more often than not, um, even our clients and customers are going through the same exact thing, maybe a little bit of a modified version of it, but um, I think we're all extremely adaptable and understanding during this time. So just make sure that you communicate with them as well. Um, and then the last line of communication is really going to fall into your family and your children. How are you setting that expectation with them? How are you communicating it with them? Um, I know for me personally, I will get eye to eye with my little one and be like, hey, mommy has a call. I really need you to be my special helper so that I can have a really good call. I think giving them that title or that job of being your helper gets them kind of excited and, and challenges them to want to help you <laughs> to succeed in working from home. Um, I know uh, Christy, our CEO, she has kind of like a thing on her door that's more like a hotel, like do disturb or do not disturb. That way her son knows like when he can come in and bug her while she's in her office. And I think that's an extremely um, easy way to communicate that with your family. 
Um, another colleague of mine, Kim, she has a chalkboard at her house because uh, both her and her partner are working from home. So being able to kind of set up that expectation and communicate that ahead of time with, you know, what are your meetings this week? What are mine this week? Just that open dialogue there across all avenues is really what you need as far as communication goes. Next slide, Melissa. Thank you. Um, scheduling is another big one. I mean, right now, office hours and life is going to look very different than what it was. So just make sure that whatever those office hours are, that they are consistent. Make sure that you are communicating that with your supervisor and that they understand what they're going to get from you during this time. Um, you know, some people love to block their schedule. I know for me personally, I like to do like spurts of, you know, maybe 50 minutes to an hour and then take a 10 minute break and go and connect with the kids, do something fun. Um, so make sure that whatever it is that you're staying consistent and you're getting your stuff done. Um, I think breaks are extremely, extremely useful. Sitting at the computer can really cause a lot of eye strain and tension. So just be sure to take breaks throughout the day to kind of relieve any eye strain or body strains. Just get your wiggles out if you need to. Um, get outside, take a break with the family, walk around and just engage. Um, I think we all need those little breaks even in the office. So make sure that you're doing that as well when you're from home. Um, I made sure to include on here nap time. I personally say nap time is like my biggest friend right now. Um, that I use as kind of my power hour or two if I'm really, really lucky. Um, so I make sure that every day I have already prepared a kind of mass task list for myself to knock out during that time. So that as soon as they're asleep and I know they're out, I can really just like dig into it and get all my tasks done. Um, the last part is, you know, working together. I mentioned that we have a colleague, Kim, and both of them are working from home. So maybe work together with that partner that's in your home, if you have one, um, to where you guys have shifts in a way. Um, I know me personally, my husband works in the afternoons and evenings. So the first half of the day, that is me locked away. Those are my office hours. He's on dad duty. And then we kind of have to swap and adapt a little bit. So just see what you're able to do and what your manager or supervisor are able, able to accommodate to. Next, thank you. Separation of roles, kind of setting those expectations and those boundaries. Um, I mean, what hat are you wearing? I think we've, we've heard that phrase before, you know, I'm, I'm in a role and I wear multiple hats. Well, right now you kind of have to distinguish which hat you are wearing. Um, I think your physical space is a good way of separating those roles. I know not all of us have the luxury right now of having a dedicated office space, um, but if you are in a, in a apartment or a house where you can have that, I think that's really important. So at the end of the day, when you've got all your work done, you are fully able to check out and be present and have time with your family. Um, let them know the difference between you know, working parent and, you know, mom or dad time. Um, let them know that, you know, when I'm off this call, I'm gonna come back and reconnect with you. Um, kind of encouraging and reassuring your family members that you are gonna come back to, you know, the other roles that you have and wear those hats. Um, just don't set your day, don't, sorry, if you don't set your day to separate those roles, and give each your full attention, it's gonna be really hard for you to feel at the end of the day that it was successful. So just make sure you're doing that. Um, I think that was it. Thank you, Melissa. Um, so right here we have um, some activities that I set up or that we kind of collaborated on. These are different activities that may or may not require kind of direct supervision. Depending on the age, it's gonna vary a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, you could see some of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, for the younger ones, you're a little bit more limited. But for, you know, toddlers and elementary age kids, there are so many different resources online for, you know, educational games, um, interactive shows. I know a lot of the zoos and aquariums even have where you can tour online, which my children thought was like the coolest thing ever to kind of have like that inside look of the aquarium, see all the fish. 
So that was really, really cool. So definitely take a look and see what you really have at your fingertips to use during this time and get really creative with that. And speaking on getting creative, um, I find that sometimes those items in your house that you never use will provide hours and hours of entertainment. Um, if you think of like around the holidays, every holiday we usually have this pile of boxes. And so we'll make houses and rocket ships and whatever you can imagine, but it'll keep my children entertained for the longest time. So maybe try to um, pull out some of those tricks out of your hat. Um, I've included a couple other ones in here like pom-pom sorting. Um, that's kind of going to like a Montessori method where they can separate them by size or by color. And it, it's not just play, it's educational as well. Um, building an indoor fort, you know, create that spaceship or that car out of those boxes, um, blow up a balloon, play volleyball inside the house. Um, I think that would be really fun. We've even done the one where you have like a string or a streamer all throughout the hallway and it's a, you know, a laser field and the kids can't knock them down. They can't touch them. Um, just learn to play with them. Get creative. Those times where you're stepping away and you're having a break. I think these are the best ways for you to engage with your children at home when you are on those breaks so that they're able to allow you to walk away and work more productively later. Um, Another example for you guys, um, Kim on our team as well, she has nieces and nephews that have been writing her during this time. And so they'll write the kids back and send it through the mail. And I think that's a really exciting thing. Like every child likes to get mail. They like to feel like a grown up and go get it from the mailbox. So just really um, get creative, look at some of these ideas and see what might inspire you and your children. Uh, these are a couple of resources that we found online for children to learn um, and also play while you're working from home. Um, I will say a few of these resources, your, maybe your children's teachers might have access to free accounts. Um, some of them do cost money, some are free. So I would check um, if any of these interest you once you look at them to check in with maybe your child's teacher and see if they do have access to a free account and can share those credentials with you. Um, myself personally, we've been using uh, Raz Kids, Teach My Monster to Read, ABC Mouse. Um, and I found that they're, they're really, really good online resources for my kindergartner. Um, but I, kind of got lost in some of the other ones for older children as well. So <laughs> I think there is um, definitely some resources for all ages here. The younger your children may be, um, I feel like the harder it is for them to understand, you know, the work time versus the mom and dad time. So I wanted to add this slide in here as um, kind of to give you ideas of different ways that you can reward your children. I feel that rewarding positive behavior in the home really creates a pleasant and enjoyable experience for all parties. So just be patient and be sure that you are rewarding them when they are doing something that allows you to remain productive. Um, set up time to you know, take those dance breaks, eat a popsicle outside, go grab the bikes and go for a little quick ride, whatever it might be that's going to encourage them to continue um, you know, being quiet or doing what they need to do so that you can remain productive working from home. Um, for some of the younger ones, maybe doing a sticker chart might be a really good idea for you. Um, we've done that in our home as well and then kind of had like a bigger prize box at the end of the week. So, so many stickers will get them, you know, a bigger prize at the end. I think giving them reasons and um, kind of a, a path to succeed in a way is really exciting for them um, and it kind of keeps all of us accountable at the end of the day. So just pick something that works best for you um, and try and get a little playful with that as well. The last one I feel like is um, probably one of the most important is just self-reflection. I think I needed to hear this myself as well, um, you know, working from home as a parent is not just limited to our current conditions right now. You might be introduced to this situation again, whether that is weather or a school closure or maybe a family event. 
Um, you just never know. So I feel like right now is a really good time for you to take note of what is working for you, what's working for your family and your employer. Um, so that way, if you're ever in a situation like this, again, working from home and parenting, that you are set up for successful practices in the future. Um, another thing is to, to remember to give yourself grace during this time. Um, there are going to be days where you feel like you knocked it out of the park and it was a really, really good day. And there's going to be other days where you want to run out of the house screaming and pulling out your hair. <laughs> but I think it's just important to know that, like I've mentioned earlier, we're all kind of going through this, maybe a different modified version of it, but we can all relate. And I think that is a really important thing. Um, at the end of the day, your children are going to love you still, your relationships will be stronger, and you're going to realize just how resilient you are and how adaptable you are and how much work you can get done during a, a time that you just could not even fathom. So make sure that you give yourself grace and that you take note of what's working right now for you. This last slide here that we had um, is just a list of some of the resources that I mentioned earlier. I wanted to make sure that you guys all had a chance to come back and check out some of these websites and links. Um, I really, really loved all of these. So I hope that you guys are able to use these in your own life. Um, I do want to end too with saying, you know, before we jump into questions, I wanted to thank you all for being with us today. I think things have changed drastically for so many of us right now as parents and working from home. Um, but we know you are attempting to be five star everything right now. And we recognize your efforts and we applaud you. Um, I hope that some of these resources today are going to enhance your lifestyle from working from home and parenting, and is gonna really enable and encourage you to stay and remain on top of your game. Awesome, thank you, Liz. Um, so if anybody has questions, feel free to chat um, CultureWorks in the group chat. Uh, just do a personalized private chat to just CultureWorks if you have a question. And it looks like a couple came in while you were going through the slides, Liz. So let's see. Um, how do you stay focused when you're working from home, even when kids are sleeping? So I guess like, um, you know, nap time, like kind of that nagging feeling, this is how I'm reading. <laughs> they're, you know, in, like they're still there, obviously. They're still in your space. So how do you keep from getting distracted? That's a really good one. And I think that is definitely a situation that a lot of us are, are struggling with as we're adapting to working from home and parenting. Um, I know for me, I have to make sure that I am in my zone. I'm in my space where I am there to get work done. The TV is off. Um, I put my phone away if I'm not expecting any calls. That way, you know, I think sometimes we'll get like one ding on our phone and we'll be like, oh, it's just one notification. And then you're just sitting there blindlessly looking through things on Facebook or Instagram or whatever that might be. So just make sure the TV is off. Make sure your phone is put away so you're not surfing the internet over things that don't matter right then. Um, and then also, you know, maybe put on some music that keeps you going. If I have music that's too slow, I realize that I'm working a little bit slower. So just adapt and adjust and see what you could do to really zone in. Awesome. I don't see any, um, any additional questions quite yet. So again, just go ahead and um, chat those into the group chat if you have any questions for Liz. Um, here's one that I have for you, just in general. How are you managing the stress of it all? You know, the, the shift we're now, I think we've been in this for about nine weeks at this point. So, you know, do you feel fully adjusted? Is it still stressful? Do you feel like you're getting through? Oh, getting through. That's such a wonderful way to put that. <laughs> um, I think for me, I, I, it was harder at first because I think, you know, so many of us didn't know how long this was going to last and we kind of still don't in a lot of ways. So for me, I've started to have time where I am first and I am going to put myself first. Um, obviously, when you're working during the day, your work and your employer, that is coming first. And then you step into being, you know, mom or dad and your children are first. So for me, I've set, you know, at least 30 minutes to an hour every day of me time, whether that's going to work out, 
watching some junky TV show or, you know, soaking in the hot tub or something downstairs. It's that's me time. Nobody else is to intrude. That for me is my way of kind of decompressing at the end of the day. Nice. Yeah, I know. I wish I wish my hot tub was open, but they closed all of our pools too. So, um, yeah, no, that's awesome. It looks like a private chat came in. What's the best way to communicate what COVID is to your kids? Like, mm -hmm. how do you explain? That's a really good question. How do you explain coronavirus? <laughs> like, mom, why can't we go to do all the cool things we used to do? Or why am I not going to school? And you know, if they're younger. Yeah, that one is hard as well. Um, I feel like each child is going to be a little bit different with how you communicate that. Um, I know for, for me and my two children, the most important thing was getting kind of eye to eye with them and letting them know that it kind of stinks for me too, like kind of playing into the relatability of it and that, you know, mom's not happy that we're not able to go out either. Like we're all in this together, but we're going to find ways to make the best of it. Um, we've found a couple of different um, videos online that are made towards children and explaining to them what COVID is. Because I think it's really hard for children to even understand the concept of germs, um, which that makes me think of another project too. If you take water in one bowl and you sprinkle a whole bunch of pepper in it, and then in another bowl you do dish soap. Um, we stuck the kids' fingers in the one with the pepper and they pulled it out and they saw how all the pepper was stuck on their finger. And then we washed it off. We put it in the dish soap and then back into the pepper and they saw the pepper move away from your finger. So that was kind of my lesson on showing them like the concept of washing your hands and how germs will kind of run away from it. Um, so that might be something that'll kind of put it into a visual perspective for your kids. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember doing those experiments like in high school science class and like this is how diseases spread and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to mention, so all the resources that we've shared here today are on our social media pages. So over the past week, we've done a huge campaign on working from home with kids. So you can check out our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn where CultureWorks HR on all of those platforms. And you can also check out our website. It's www.cultureworkshr.com um, if you wanna check out our blog. So there's additional resources that are COVID related on there as well. I see one more question. Are there any good support groups that you know of? Where can I chat with other parents that might be going through the same thing as me? Nice. I, I have, I know everyone has their feelings of like Facebook and other social media platforms, but I have found that there, throughout my time of being a parent, there's always been a Facebook group that I felt like did go with where I was in my life and parenting and everything. So I would say that would be one way. Um, I would also see if maybe there are other colleagues of yours that are going through the same thing with you. Maybe you know, having that sense of community with others that you work with that can truly relate to the same exact workload um, might be really beneficial as well. So and maybe see if maybe there's another parent um, that you can communicate with on your team. Yeah, start like a, a mini focus group for those yeah. that are the, the work from home warriors or something like that. Yeah, you make up your name, whatever you want. It to <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, does anybody have any additional questions before we wrap up today? Give it a second. I see one more. Okay, so one last one. We're at 1225. We've got a couple minutes. Have you ever experienced one of your kids having a meltdown while you're on a call? And how did you deal with it? I don't know that I've ever seen that with you, Liz, but maybe... <laughs> Um, Maybe on a, on a different call. <laughs> I've definitely um, learned my tricks in avoiding it. I'll say that. Um, I think we've all seen so many of those different like Zoom ones that are going and being blasted out of these children having meltdowns. Just so sad. It makes my heart hurt. Um, I think the biggest trick to avoid that is honestly just making sure that you're on mute. Um, even if your kids are asleep, always keep yourself on mute because you just never know. Children are so unpredictable. Um, and I think sometimes too, using maybe a chat feature within Zoom as well, like if you're on that call and you're muted and that meltdown is happening, just type a quick message like, 
hey, still here, still listening, got to go deal with this, be right back. Um, I think just that open transparency is really going to be the key of it. Like I said, we're all going through a modified version of this in some way, shape, or form. So just be open and we'll all get through it just fine. Yeah. Yeah. I know Amy on our team, um, she's one of our HR business partners. She has older children, but they, they really like to be on Zoom <laughs> and like see our they team. Love us. <laughs> so she, we've, you know, she's had to kind of set a boundary like, okay, mom is like actually working. She's not just hanging out with her friends on video, you know? So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's this, you know, brave new world of teaching our kids that yes, there's FaceTime for mom and dad, you know, with friends and family to joke around, but then there's like work time and that might still involve video calls. So yeah. Here Absolutely. we are. <laughs> Absolutely. I think my kids got a little confused too, because we ended up trying to do like game nights with uh, friends that we have on the other side of the coast. So we did that through Zoom and tried to play this virtual game. So then they were like, oh, cool. Like our friends, our family friends are here. So this is that. And then the next time I had like a real work call, they wanted to poke their head in too. So I think it's just communicating that with them and just letting them know that's a platform. It's not, you know, end all be all, this is family friend fun time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Liz, for bringing us some awesome content today. Again, check us out on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at CultureWorks HR. You can also head over to our website at cultureworkshr.com. If you have any questions right now, we are offering free COVID support to our clients and to non-clients. So if you have anybody in your network, maybe they're a small business owner, they're getting ready to, um, you know, button down their return to work process, anything like that, feel free to shoot us an email at cos at cultureworkshr.com. That's going to go to our culture operations specialist box. So it goes to our whole team and somebody will reach out um, really, really quick. I think we try to have a response time of like within an hour or two. So um, feel free to shoot anybody our way and then stay tuned. We are going to continue this Wednesday webinar series in June. So we have a few more topics up our sleeve that are um, COVID related and non-COVID related. So we think we're going to kind of keep, keep going with the webinars and we hope to see you all in June. Thank you so much.